Thank you, Mary. Thanks to all of you uh, for taking the time out on a Sunday afternoon uh, to be here with me at the Anza Community College. As I was in the parking lot, I ran into uh, Dira Kosla, who I literally uh, went to school with, so it feels like family here. But as I look over this crowd, I also see what makes Silicon Valley so special. I see students, business leaders, entrepreneurs, working families. I see faces from every ethnic group across the globe. This here is the promise of America. But many of us are here today because we also share a deep concern about the state of our democracy. Our founders warned about the problems with factions and political parties. They warned that a country could not prosper if politics were dominated by special interests. Unfortunately, we haven't heeded their warnings. Today in Washington, the politics are polarized and it seems like special interests dominate more than the voices of ordinary citizens. How else can you explain that four months to the day, four months to the day after the tragedy in Newton, Congress is still struggling to pass even the most minimal reforms of our gun laws? This paralysis extends to our nation's economy. Congress has just been unable to pass an agenda to create jobs or to provide the right type of education for the 21st century. In fact, some people I know are so frustrated with Congress that when you say Washington, they just tune out. You know those folks, they don't want to hear anything. But apathy is not an option. You see, the politics, the failure of our politics, it's not just a process thing, it actually has real consequences for the strength and competitiveness of our nation. It has put at risk the American dream for millions of middle-class families and for all those who aspire to it. At risk is the sacrifice of so many families, including mine, who wanted to pursue a better life. For the first time, there is a question of whether my generation will do as well as the previous one. And it reminds me of all the sacrifices that my family has made, like many of yours. You see, my grandfather spent four years in jail in Gandhi's independence movement because he wanted more than subjugation for his children. And that movement, that movement inspired Dr. Martin Luther King and the civil rights movement in this country and it was the civil rights movement, it was the civil rights movement that led to the Immigration Reform Act of 1965. So then my parents and so many other Asians had the chance to come to this country for a better life. Think about that for a second. Think about how difficult it must be to leave your country, leave your family, leave everything you've ever known and go to a new country. My parents took that leap of faith. For them, happiness was not about the fulfillment of their own desires. It was about what their children might accomplish in a land without limits. The question today is, is America still going to be that great land of opportunity? Is it still going to be possible for the daughters and sons of middle class families who have to take out loans to go to school and attend public school, is it still possible for them to have big dreams and achieve big things? I'm running for Congress because I want to make sure that it is. I'm running because we need... 
I'm running because we need a better politics in this country, more worthy of our founding ideals, more worthy of the sacrifices that people like my parents have made. Now, I may be idealistic, but I'm not naive. I know that our nation is deeply divided on many moral and social issues. I will not compromise when it comes to questions of basic fairness and rights, such as a woman's right to choose, a person's right to marry who they love, or basic civil liberties for people of all faiths. But even though, even though this nation may be divided on some of the big moral questions of our time, I believe that we can find common ground when it comes to improving economic opportunity for middle class families who work hard and play by the rules. My message when I get to Congress will be very simple. Those of us who believe in American greatness, who care about American exceptionalism, must put aside our differences and work together when it comes to strengthening our economy and creating good paying jobs. We must work together when it comes to helping the middle class succeed in a world that is becoming increasingly competitive. And here, Washington has a lot to learn from Silicon Valley, one of the nation's engines, most powerful engines of economic growth. <coughs> in Silicon Valley, we don't have labels, and we respect out-of-the-box thinking. We don't judge, we judge a person based on the merit of his or her ideas, not based on their titles, or their seniority, or their party. Isn't it time that we had a Congress capable of doing the same? A Congress that does not view labor and business as enemies, but as potential partners to create jobs? A Congress that does not view every government program as worth preserving, but only those that are measurably achieving actual results. A Congress that isn't beholden to the extreme ideology off the right or the left, but has pragmatic thinking about what will actually help the middle class. A Congress that doesn't just pay lip service to manufacturing jobs and saving manufacturing jobs, but actually knows what types of manufacturing jobs are sustainable in the United States and how we're going to obtain them. In short, we need more independent thinking in Congress. And members, fewer members who are going to march lockstep with their party and just regurgitate talking points. We need members of Congress who are going to stand up to PACs and the special interests and fight for change and new policies. Let me be specific about some of the policies based on what I've heard from all of you. We need tax rules in this country that incentivize companies to invest in the United States instead of parking their money overseas and reform of a tax regime and rules that were written for a 1960s economy. And those companies, those companies that benefit from those reforms ought to be expanding their payroll and helping with work or training because the goal of any incentive should be more jobs for the middle class. We need to simplify, we need to simplify regulations at every level so that businesses choose to create jobs in Sunnyville and Santa Clara instead of in Ireland or Singapore. Most important, we need to improve our nation's education system. Because today's global economy, today's global economy is based not on where you live, but on what you know. Our nation has been falling behind in education, and we simply cannot afford it. Many in here at Thelma describes Silicon Valley as technology rich, but if you talk to her as an educator, she'll tell you many of her schools are technology poor. We can start by making sure that every elementary school student in this district has the opportunity to learn how to code. It's, it's a simple idea, but think about how many millionaires the Valley has produced because they knew how to code, or how many good paying jobs exist for those who have programming skills. In fact, if there's a website far more important than rokana.com, it's code.org. We also, 
We also need to make sure that every student in this district has some opportunity for higher education, whether it's a university, whether it's a community college, or whether it's vocational education. See, in this time in history, knowledge has never been more key to get a good paying job. Education, I owe everything I am today to education. For middle class families, it's your way up in the world. And as a teacher at Santa Clara and at Stanford, higher education is my passion. And as a member of Congress, I will ask educational institutions that are receiving federal dollars to work with the private sector so that they're teaching our students like Lindsay teach real world employable skills that lead to an actual job. I'll also ask them to help struggling working families by providing some of the courses and credits online so that they can get credit for those classes without exorbitant tuition. And our colleges should not be turning away any California students because of a lack of space or a lack of resources. That said, our country needs brain power from wherever we can find it. And all of you know better than me that our local economy thrives today because we've welcomed technology leaders and entrepreneurs from around the world. If someone is a job creator, we should make it easy for them to come to these shores and stay. And as for immigrants who are already here, who are getting a decent education, or who are doing meaningful work, we ought to stop wasting our energy trying to kick them out. That's just common sense, and it's why we need immigration reform. Silicon Valley, what makes me so excited, Jeremy alluded to this about the district, but what makes me so excited and passionate about this campaign is that Silicon Valley can shape not just our nation, but our world. Think about it for a minute in the 20th century. One of the most brutal centuries in human history. Two world wars, the Korean War, the Vietnam War, the Cold War. In just the past 10 years, thousands of Americans have fought in Iraq and Afghanistan, giving their lives and their limbs. There has to be a better way forward. Silicon Valley offers us some hope. You see, in this district, in this campaign, we literally have people from across the globe. When we send out a tweet or post something on Facebook or LinkedIn, we don't think of borders. We aren't limited by ideology. We don't speak the stale language of balance of power politics. We just have friends in China, in India, in Pakistan, in the Middle East. That is why the world looks to Silicon Valley as a place for innovation, unencumbered by the past struggles along racial, religious, or national lines. It represents America at its best, the 21st century at its best. If you believe then, as I do, that Silicon Valley not only can, but must shape American politics, that from here we can build a new politics for a new century grounded in the very ideals that define our nation, then I ask you to join this campaign. Together, we can restore civility and reason to our politics and make sure that every American has the chance to rise just as high as their hard work will let them. Together, we can help America remain that beacon of innovation, lighting our way to a more open, peaceful, and democratic world. I am so excited to be beginning this journey with all of you and standing here seeing you hopeful for America's future. Thank you.